without any further ado whatsoever, we are being joined by our final guest of the evening. She is UFC strawweight Justine Keese. Justine's coming off a unanimous decision victory over Ashley Yoder December 9th and is slated to return to the Octagon June 25th at UFC Fight Night 112 against Felice Herring. Should be an interesting matchup. How are we doing tonight, Justine? I'm doing great. Uh, it, was a, it was a half training day today, so I have a little bit of energy, and I'm glad I get to spend the, you know, the the evening before you know I go to sleep, and I get to uh, chat with you guys. So thanks for having me on the show. And um, oh, it's, a, it's definitely what's a pleasure. Up, guys? I mean, it's one <laughs> one of the things that that you know I, I enjoy about doing this is is get, you know talking to you guys, getting to pick your brains, you know, you know, see, seeing how you guys are outside of that that whole fighting and training at atmosphere is one of the things that, you know, we like to kind of uh, coin ourselves, you know, we're not a typical MMA show. Well, wherever the conversation goes, it, it kind of goes sometimes, but I, I, uh, hear I that. mean, I, yeah, I called in at, at an awkward part. You do say, I mean, but, um, I think, I think hey, I'm the face of the show. I get it. I get it. <laughs> we're, we're, we're Hey, we just wherever the conversation goes, it goes. But we're not, you know, it's not one of those <laughs> weird shows or whatever. But one of the things that I mean, one of the reasons I want to have you on, I mean, your your story so far as a martial artist is is, is something to kind of stand up and 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 think is special. I mean, not a lot of people get to you know be basically that close to having your career ended. You know, having probably the biggest opportunity snatched away from you, and to kind of come back. And kind of recapture it. It doesn't happen that often, especially in combat sports. And to see, you know, everything you went through during taping of the show, the injury, you know, now you're back. Oh yeah. You know, look, look, absolutely amazing. Oh, against, it was. I guess, I, mean, uh, was, I, guess I was Ashley. Good. I was, At, yeah. Go ahead. Oh no, I was saying yeah, you're right. I was absolutely gutted, but because you know, before that whole show started, like there was already like winning it and all the training and just you know just just going through the motions. Anyway, every, everything was so vivid for me. All I had to do is just, you know, show up and just, you know, make sure I do everything, stay the course and just, you know, no one, no one on the show was a threat to me. I was excited to compete against anyone or wherever. It's just, for whatever reason, it wasn't my time. And, um, yeah, it, it was, I was gutted at first, but then I was like, all right, well, I'll go get my knee fixed and I'll go right back at it again. I'm not finished yet. I know I can get better. I know I still have a lot of potential, and I haven't reached it yet. So, get my knee fixed, and thank goodness, you know, they still, you know, I still got my contract, and they're like, okay, well, when you get your knee fixed, uh, we'll get you your um, debut um, on like the UFC stage. I was like, okay, great, count me in there, I'll be right back. <laughs> so, I mean, it don't, I mean, I had to go, you know, through extensive rehab, but it wasn't my first time, so I've done it before, and I think I did even a better job with this. Um, what I mean, like, you know, rehab was therapy for my knee. So um, I learned a lot from my the first time. It wasn't as extent, as uh, intense. But, um, yeah, no, it, it seemed like, you know, going through the show was like the, you know, was like, I don't know, it was, it was a kind of like an expedited route to the belt. So maybe things, I have to fight for everything. So maybe it's, you know, no, it's like, ah, oh, nothing's going to come easy to me. But it's all right. Like, well, nothing um, comes easy in combat sports, that's for sure. No, not, not at all. It's like you just got to, you know, you get you get what you put in. You just got to work, work, work. And if something happens, you know, it, I wasn't going to let it deter, you know, that kind of, it happens. You know, it's just, I'm not going to let that deter me because I still want to see how good I can get. I feel like I have, there's still a lot of growing room, so... You know, I get to do it on a big stage with a big audience, and, you know, it's exciting, and it's a thrill for me. And the hardest thing, though, like you were saying, like, you know, what, what happens uh, on the outside of competing, I'm still trying to figure it out because with UFC pace, I can't uh, – the UFC pace and with the weight category pace, I, uh, with the weight category I compete in, I can't compete as frequently, like as, as back-to-back as I was like. Like when I was in Thailand, I was maybe competing three or four times a month. But, um, yeah, the UFC, you have to take several months off after because, you know, you can't, I can't, you know, just fight and then go the next week and fight again, whether I'm injured or not. <laughs> I hate that. But, um, yeah, so I'm really learning a lot about, more about myself probably in the recovery and the rest part. You know, it's 
I, well, I, I don't think the other thing is what you're dead on about is that not just you know you have to remember you're you're constru- constrained by how many fighters that they have under contract, how often they have they have fights. I mean, the UFC has gotten significantly better as how often they have female fights on the card. It's a, it's almost oh, like yeah. typically we we see at least two two fights per card, regardless of which weight class we're talking about. But not just that, you know, it, it also teaches you outside of the case to, to to manage not just your health but your finances better uh, people don't understand how much you guys have to put into training camps like you know i remember seeing somebody uh, you was have given to put uh, everything into it uh, I remember someone was giving Sarah Morass crap uh, when she said that she didn't have money for a training camp, and they're like, "Oh, well, you're a UFC f- a fighter." I'm like, well, "What does that have anything to do with it?" At the end of the day, I'm like, "At the end hey, of the day, you know what? You know, they offer a contract. Mm-hmm. It's either you accept the contract or you go fight anywhere else." A lot of the fighters they want to fight for the best promotion in the world. If they have to earn their way to get there, then so be it. But at a lot of times, then you say, "Oh, oh, well, they didn't want to take this fight with so and so for so and so price." Well. Who are you to sit there and tell them they should take that opportunity just because that's what, what they gave them? So, I mean, you see Man, a lot of things yeah. that I think fans and media don't really quite understand yet. You have to put everything into it. And if you're partial, you're going to – I feel like if you're partial in one little area, you're going to pay for it in one way or another. So it's just like put every, everything and, you know, your heart and soul into this. And, you know, things will – hopefully things will turn out your way, you know, and – but, yeah, I mean, here's another thing funny from the show is, like, um, I don't know if this is still, like, the record or not. I haven't uh, been paying too close attention. But um, we were told, like, our season, the straw weight season, tough 20, was, like, the most expensive grocery bill. The smallest season yet that the fighter, that the house has ever had, meaning smallest season weight-wise, compared to the heavyweights. Like, males being so, like, not as specific with, okay, we just want chicken. We just want uh, cucumber. Well, they said females were a lot more specific on the grocery list, meaning with grocery list because we can't do our own shopping. They have to cater to our dietary Absolutely, needs. Absolutely, but that's also the other thing. You put it on a list. People don't understand how much it costs to even eat healthy yeah, but here's, as a professional here it is, though, athlete. Like, that, I think that like, that takes up a, a good, you know, of your total purse for arguments. See, Let's say that food that you have to eat proper for that training camp would probably take up a good thirty percent of your of your paycheck for your fight, regardless if you win or lose. People don't oh, understand yeah. I mean, that. I that's with the my friends. Like they, they all know I'm at the grocery store getting my food, getting my greens. But you know, we have to get the organic, and it's just such a small, small weight weight category. You have to get like you know organic this and clean. You know, everything is just the fresh of the freshest and. The, and yeah, it just it, it adds up very very quickly. And you know, my friends, my closest friends, they you know, the, I don't know, I'm usually at the grocery store to get my greens, or driving, or at the gym. So that's and then with gas, with groceries, with things, it's like where where is my money going? <laughs> and it's going right into that. And as you know, maybe I mean you put it all into it, yes. But then it's very very rewarding whenever after a win or after a competition, it's like a relief. It's like, oh, my God, like it was for something. So, But, yeah, people don't realize it, and it's okay, and you don't have to realize it. I'm not trying to convince anyone. Like, this is, for me, this is for myself, and I want, you know, I want to see how good I can be in this division, and this is what it's going to take. So, yeah, there's a lot of arguments, but for me, it's in one ear or the other on, oh, you should do this, this, and that. No, I have people I hire to listen to, so it's – um you know, I, I they tell me what to do as far as, you know, what you need for dietary stuff, you know, as far as even weight programming, uh, weight management program stuff. People help me in that because, you know, I'll tell them, okay, well, the best thing I can do, I know how to punch and kick and I know how to do the fighting stuff. So so I, ha- I need help I need help on the other end of it, putting well, like, yeah, Justine, all the time just, Justine, together. You, you talk about that. You talk about um, having all these people around you and how, do you have to go through a selection process? Because I know, yeah, you want to focus on your fighting, uh, but you got to be able to trust the people that are around you. I've seen pe- fighters, uh, you know, people steal money away from away from them and just totally ruin their careers. Um, but, uh, what kind of, what kind of process? For sure, and I've and I've seen that too, and it's really sad. But I've known the people that the people that I have with me that are, but I've known them since ch- uh, the majority, you know, the. Okay, I've yeah, known I got some you. of them since childhood, so I have, you know, I've 
I've been, oh, yes, I've been very, very selective, but uh, more so now on who I train with and when I train or who I train with because once upon a time it was a lot of fun. I was training with everyone, didn't matter size, didn't matter. But now I have to be careful. I can't have heavy people following me, falling on me. Just anything that will reduce, uh, increase injury, like things like that, I kind of have to be a lot more picky and it's, a, it's, it's a pain in the ass, trust me, because when I was a few years ago, oh, it was with anyone, with everyone. Now it's, uh, I have to be a little bit picky. It's like, sorry, you know, if, if anyone, if I roll someone like a lot, lot heavier than me, I have to be like, okay, I have to think about, okay, if I do something wrong or if they do something wrong, is this going to it's end well? So, yeah. yeah. I mean, sure. and, well, that's, I think, like the thing said, that other, go ahead, Brad. You said you were really, I mean, it's real frustrating because, yeah, in Thailand, you get to fight all the time. And yeah. it's like, what do you oh do? God. What do you do? Like you're you're with the UFC, and you might not be making uh, the money that you want to make right from the get go. Um, I mean, what do you do in that time? I know you're training and everything, and that's great. But it's like, I'm teaching how do you fill the void of that live combat? Well, I don't. I don't. I figure it out. I don't make plans after. Like, um, I had never had an after party or things like that, just because I'm thinking, okay, I don't. I, I just think it's just bad karma. I mean, that, whether it happens one day or not, I don't know. But usually after a fight, I just want to go back home and go to sleep. It's all the adrenaline. And I'm freezing. I feel like I'm starting to get sick, and I don't make plans yeah. after because everything was for that. And then so what I teach myself yeah. is, like, okay, like, I have so many different places I can go to. Like, I can go back to Thailand. I can go back to the East Coast with my family. I can go back and meet up with my coaches in California. But, you know, I'm, gonna teach, I'm trying to teach myself. I've only been competing in the UFC for uh, maybe two years now. I've competed frequently in Thailand. Usually after I fight, I go back and I get one day off and I'll go to the beach finally. And, you know, and then the next day, maybe that's a Sunday or Monday, but Monday – then I'll go back to training because I usually have a fight maybe that next weekend. So I'll get one day off, and now I'm thinking, okay, I can go on vacation. I'll, you know, I'm trying to teach myself different things, and it's hard to say, oh, this is what I always do because everything is a little bit different, you know. You had a half a day today. What did you do on your free time during your half a day? Uh, well, my, it was my mom. It was my mother's birthday. She wasn't. She wasn't oh, happy feeling birthday. well yesterday on her birthday. But she, I spent time with her, and um, every time I come home, I'm o- I say home. I'm over. I say I'm I'm over in North Carolina training on the East Coast because my fight is okay. gonna be in Oklahoma City, so it's only an hour different time zone wise, and okay. so I can train here on the East Coast. And uh, so I say I I, I no, I stay at my mom's and I. I bring home like an animal every time I every time I come back just to you know, for some company. And uh so anyways we're just hanging out with uh with my dog, with the rabbit and and my sister came over. So the whole family spent uh, you know the we got to meet up today versus yesterday. She wasn't feeling so well. But anyways, yes, yeah, so I had my workout, I was done about four or five and I just went back and relaxed. And um, I was actually thinking, you know, maybe I should go for a run, but I was thinking, not I have a huge training load this week. I'll I'll forget about the run, and I'll hang out, spend some time with my family and with the animals and get my things in order for the whole training week this week. So, like, tomorrow is Monday. I'll start maybe with, like, a mile swim, and then I'll have my jiu-jitsu practice. Uh, then I have – my jiu-jitsu practice and then pros practice, strength and conditioning, and maybe I'll finish with a weight management session. So that will be like, and but of course I have maybe an hour, two hours in between uh, a few of the sessions. But I'm doing about four or five different things a day right now. When I start the weight management, it will be maybe around six or seven. So it really increases in this weight category again. Like it's not easy for me, but it, it's doable. So while I'm young, I'm going to keep on. <laughs> I'm going to keep on doing it. Hey, oh, you know, I just the, bore you. the the opportunity to 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 take advantage of 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 opportunities that life gives you are small. You know, you don't want to be that that person. You know, kind of uh, looking in the rearview mirror, so to speak, saying "coulda, woulda, shoulda." I mean, you know, oh, we no, see we absolutely. see people do do crazy things. Speaking of which, I gotta I gotta ask you, Justine, uh, what was your thought on sure. the whole Paige Van Zandt and Chris Weidman Reebok videos? A lot of people were, were hating on Paige, but I thought what Chris said was hilarious. And, uh, oh, and, I still and, you know, when I saw someone sent me the video of Paige, and I was like, oh, my God. And I, right away I was thinking of the parody I would have made, but I would have just taken it to another level. I would have 
got I'm not endorsed by Reebok. Of course, I'll get the you know sponsors to for them for Fight Week, like any other UFC, but not the way you know Paige Van yeah, Zandt is. No, no, so anyway, they, they went and signed like they say, gave oh. personal contracts to I think like something like ten UFC fighters. Like uh, Conor McGregor was one, Paige was one, uh, Sage Northcutt was yeah. one. But yeah, you're right. You you just get that that base pay, that sponsor pay from them, not the the other contract where, where they're taking care of these fighters. So. I, mean, they, I they got do, what they, Paige they, they was trying to do. Well, I just so. knew. I just knew what that – because I've seen the video before it got taken down, and I was like, somebody's going to give her crap about this. I just I just know. Oh, my God. Like, and I was I right. But what Chris, level, did, like, what Chris did was, was amazing. And, like, he, he didn't take – he wasn't taking a shot at her, but it was a parody video. I don't care what anyone says. It was great. It was great. I'm so, and I see Chris every time I fight on the East Coast, even before UFC. I've always – Chris has always been out there. So I've known Chris since – uh, before the UFC days, and it's been really neat because I've had some fights. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, he, he, people people don't even realize he he uh, he fought um, uh, Uriah Hall long before the Ultimate Fighter, long before you know back in uh, Ring of Combat. So like pe- like, yeah. like people don't understand. Chris has been around the sport for quite a while. I actually want to get yeah, your thoughts. Like you know, you're Ring good. For, you know, you're, you're obviously fairly good friends with the guy. You know. You know, what do you think, like, a lot of people are saying that, you know, may, like, maybe he's kind of peaked and, you know, he should maybe think about going to another gym, this, that, and the third. Like, uh, you're starting to get the critics coming out because he hasn't, you know, things haven't been going his way. What are your thoughts on that? I don't think, I don't think Chris should change anything, you know. He fought some really tough dudes, just, ha, you know, ha, had some things you know, that not I, go I his way. People, but. I really didn't know people were saying that. I really, I'd stray away from that kind of those kind oh, of, you yeah, know, comments you know and things social, like that. You should know how social media is by now. You know, you have for for every two or three good people you have saying, you know, saying encouraging things about you, regardless if you win or lose, compared to people pouring out negative nonsense, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, and I, I, I feel, you know, I again, I realize with the UFC, I'm gonna under, I'm gonna be acquainted with a lot more and more people, strangers that know more about me than I know about them. I'm starting to realize that, but still, my fan base is is small, but it's not that. I mean, it's 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 a genuine fan. Like I've, I mean, maybe I've come across two negative out of my fighting career around maybe around 30 fights now. I've maybe come across two comments. I was like, what the hell? But next, you know, I'm like, well, I don't even. I'm not gonna even. I'm not gonna even. You know, like bother to give that the response but but you know I have a really genuine and uh I like I like my fan base and it's small but then again I'm realizing I've there's more and more strangers that know a lot about me so yeah hey, Justine, and, and dealing with it you're, and, you're talking to, you're talking about social media small fan base and that was one of the questions I wanted to ask you and now you're fighting a social media darling in like uh, Felice Harris tell me about she's it. got <laughs> I love she's it. got billions, <laughs> she's got a bazillion followers so this is going to be beneficial to you in uh, many ways. I mean, this is going to uh, open up the, the it's floodgates a for your social it's, media. It's a little project. It's a little everything. Yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, but you know, uh, what is again, it, what, I'm not sure. I'll go ahead. What what's the feeling? Like? What's I want to know what the feeling is like to, uh, to fight uh, Felice. Uh, she's been around the sport for a long time, and um, it's, oh, I've heard about it for a great, long time too. Yeah, that's going to be a great, uh, great opportunity. I remember seeing her like in action, and I looked at her, and I was like, "Oh, I, I can do that. I know I can go. I can go in there. Why isn't that girl doing these things?" Like, you know, I was just. Yeah. I remember looking at her, and she says, yeah, back in the day, and I've wanted to go against her for a long time, way before really social media. I mean, I remember in high school, maybe it was like 2006 oh, wow. or seven. I remember people talking about Facebook and college people having it. It never really interested me until I started competing. People say you need to market, blah, blah, blah. But I think it's actually pretty neat because, um, I mean, part of me was like, was wondering, okay, should I not do any social media and just see how much I, you know, how much I can, like, piggyback? But then again, like, if you see, uh, if you, you know, if you see things that from her page, it's a, it's a lot of negativity, you know, like, and mm. I don't know, it's because the kind of things she posts or the, her being, you know, a little bit, you know, obscene and things like that in other areas. I don't know if that's, yeah. you know, that kind of, that's, that's kind of the audience I want to draw, but it's going to happen no matter what. You know, her people are going to see me, and, you know, they can – the funniest probably – I think the funniest thing I saw is uh, my friends messaged it to me, but I was 
I'm younger than she is, but uh, <laughs> there's like comments like, oh, it looks like Felice is fighting her mother or. <laughs> <laughs> That's what but I mean about thing. how the negativity on social media is just drowned yeah, out. It's like Felice is straight. fighting her mother. And then, I look at my page, and then you know, my page, they haven't they haven't about... realized that that you can Google this stuff and actually look at that and look at at at, at the the breakdown of both these fighters without looking like a complete idiot. But I guess some people yeah. haven't grown that part it's of their okay. brain. It's okay. It's okay. People they'll, people are, they'll, they can make they can make them their they'll have more better judgments and I think they'll have better comments after our after our matchup. So. They they can say what they want. I, I, not com- I got nothing nothing love for Felice. She's done a lot for, for for the sport that people don't realize. And and you know I think this is a, I think this is a bigger fight for her than it is you. Even though technically you're kind of on the other, uh, you know I I think you have a, a a bigger upside moving forward than she does. She's kind of getting to the okay, point now think, where think, you, she needs to make a run under- now, or it's never going to happen for her. So who do you think is going to be the underdog? Because we were trying to decide who's going to be the underdog. Uh, the bulldog, I mean, that's all I know. I think that they would probably mark oh, it Diana is? as so the underdog because the underdog how popular she sure. is. But if someone's no, actually I'm just looking saying at the fight. All I know is the bulldogs. I don't know underdogs. No, it was a joke. Never mind. <laughs> but as far as Go ahead, I, I think when it comes down to it, they'll probably mark Justine <laughs> down as the underdog, which is, is I think is wrong was when you look at Wait, the, who's the saying who? Wait, who's saying who? Proficiently what? as what they I, I, do inside the cage, not their popularity, not what they bring social media. When you look at the tools they bring into the cage, I think it should be that Justine would be the favorite. But that's not how everything works, unfortunately. And I guarantee you when this fight comes out that they're probably going to have uh, Felice as the favorite. Yeah, I think so, too. I, I mean, that'd be kind of, I kind of, I would like that. You know, it was, either or, whether it's football or not, but. I like being non- I like being underdog. I like being under the radar, and I like the pace of things right now. I can handle it right now. So, um, <laughs> it's just, yeah, well, it's, it's interesting to hear what that's you guys think because I wasn't sure. My coach and I was like, I wonder who's going to be the underdog. It's like, well, Justin, you know, I, I, I really I, don't. I, I I don't think you're the underdog in this fight. Uh, not at all, because I feel like there's a lot of pressure on police. You know, time, uh, t- Father Time is, you know, coming to a close. She needs some big victories. Uh, maybe if she wants to get a shot at some kind of gold or any kind of anything, she's got to – she does. Put, her we're way. in the house together. Felice and I were castmates. We were, we were housemates. We were castmates. And, you know, in my, you know, in my eyes, in, in my eyes, she's harmless. Like, you know, we got along or we were cordial. We got along. If she didn't like me or if she hated my guts, I, I didn't know about it or she fooled me, but – Again, I, she was harmless in my, in my eyes, and um, we were fine. She puts a lot, a lot of pressure on herself, and she's, you know, yeah. she's, she you just fills herself with a lot of, but, but, you know, she, her heart's in it. She, you know, she, you know, she, she has a background with, you know, a very big background with her fighting career, with her, you know, that's, that's tied with her family. I'm the only kickboxer. My, heck, I'm the only professional athlete. I'm coming from a family of doctors and like, you know, I'm the only professional oh, wow. athlete. Oh I'm, man, that I'm must have been a tough one, sell for clearly. you. That <laughs> so, must have been a really tough sell for you. <laughs> I mean, be, being, being hey, Dad, in a house be a full of doctors what? and you're saying, I'm going to be a professional fighter. They're probably like, well, yeah, let's check her in the I mental hospital. Mom, what is going wrong with this girl? But I know what's going on right there. You, you, you got the hook up for the, for, for the medical bill. So you don't need to worry about it. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, but it it was. I mean, it, it's it's interesting, and you know, like you know, if I get hurt or anything, of course I'll be like, hey, you know, what's what's wrong, and you know, that's great. But getting you know, phone calling home and saying, hey, I want to go to you know, go to live in Thailand for a few years, and they're like, what? <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. I'm that's what I mean by it's a tough sell because they're like, what are you talking about now? What crazy Thailand? What are you going to Thailand for? And I'm then going they to realize I'm hard not serious. Uh, it's one of the things you gotta you, you gotta love about when you come from families like that. Because my my, my grandmother they're, was uh, was was a, was a registered nurse. My, my my mother was also in the field, and and so I kind of get where, where where what she would probably that 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 structure that comes around with that. So like I said, it, it probably was a very tough sell for her. Yeah, I mean, she, like when I after my competition, 
Oh, uh, she won't watch them, of course, or she won't go to them or come to them. Or to my 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 brother, and my his family, his family will. But my mom, she will wait at the house until I give her a phone call, or someone will call her to let her. It's harder to call her right after UFC, but uh, someone will call her and they'll let her know I'm fine, and then she'll watch it over. I tell her, I tell people, all the views on YouTube are just from my mom because she's always watching it on replay or things like that. But she's very, I mean. She supports what I do. She helps. You know, the, one, another plus side of living on the East Coast is if I don't, if I don't have time to cut up all my vegetables and stuff, I'll, I'll call my mom like, hey, mom, can you cut these vegetables up for me and blah, 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 and she'll do it for me. It's so, so sweet, and she helps me and helps me with food prep and, I mean, tons and tons of laundry. And when I'm doing four or five different sessions a day from jiu-jitsu to wrestling to striking to transition practice, you go through a lot, a lot of clothes, so... Um, it's a, she's a huge, huge help, and my family, of course, like any everyone, really, really supports what I do, and they're always excited for when I'm competing. And I really, I, res- I, I really, really am grateful for that because I see some uh, these fellow fighters that don't have that same sort of family support, and it's it's sad, and it's just like, but they're still thriving, they're still doing well. But for me, it's a, a very um, they try they they do all they can to make sure. Uh, it's stress-free, and all I have to do is just focus on training, and I'm really grateful for that. Uh, people so underestimate how much that having that 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 inner that inner support system means so much to to, to an athlete. It doesn't matter if we're talking about MMA or anything anything else in between. Like to have that 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 support, that undying, unflinching support at at home, is immeasurable. It doesn't matter how many fans you get, how many supporters you have outside of that that one person inside oh, exactly. your circle could could cause more damage than anyone outside of it that's so so true and again they, yeah they help me so much they all work together to make sure like yeah the stress is minimized it's so, i mean there's always a little bit of something but we we tackle it together so i can just go back to focusing on what i need to do for to you know to succeed and to 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 get better you know like and it's you have a brilliant family that's on my side for that, and yeah, it's it's it's, it's a huge. I say it's a huge advantage for sure. Yeah, and we were just talking about fans and supporters. Uh, he don't he don't want me to say anything, but uh, you know, I've I got a, a guy who's been waiting to listen to this interview all night, and you know, he's a, he's a big oh. uh, a big a big fan of yours. He, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to ask a question or anything. He just. He he he's been a What's big supporter name? of you. Uh, I'll have to send him a picture, and I'll send I'll send him an autograph picture. Just make sure you email me his name and his contact information. I'll be happy to reach out to him. It's very nice that he's on the show, that he's listening. Yeah, well, he, like he, he's like he's a guy. He's a guy. I'm I'm too I'm too scared to say anything. I'm speechless. I'm like, well, don't worry about it. I'll I'll bring you up. You don't have to ask a question. So he, oh, literally, I'll probably oh get, I'll goodness. probably gonna get a message in a few minutes. He like screaming like a like a two year old little girl or something like that. Oh my god! No, let him know, please. Hello, Wait, what's his name? Uh, his Do you have Rusty. like a tag name or Instagram name or a well, no, real name? Yeah, or... uh, when uh, after we get off the show, I'll 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 message you his uh, his Fantastic. tag. So. Okay, I hear you. So they, they, there you go, Rusty. You got you got some love from from Miss Keish for you. He's saying uh, you and um, and Lisa Ellis are his favorite two uh, uh, you know, female MMA fighters. So Aww, at least you know he's not a bandwagoner. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, for sure. So there you go, Rusty. You got you got some love there, brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, um, I mean, this is. Oh, go ahead. I mean, I mean, it's one of the things why, why I why I like doing these shows. Like I said, to, to get to know you guys, but also like for for moments like this, where where you get someone who maybe is, you know socially they they don't they don't have the confidence to reach out to somebody, where we can kind of be that bridge to help out. You know, I I had a I have a guy who calls in sometimes and talks to some of the fighters, and he trains jujitsu. He's autistic, and like he uh, he called in with uh when we had Kobe Covington on. Now, Kobe actually reached out through me afterwards and said he's going to go down to uh, Louisiana where, where this guy trains at him and um, and Jorge Mastavar are going to are going to train jiu-jitsu and they're going to go out and like have a lunch afterwards. And it's one of the things I talk about with, with, with a lot of people who listen in and who watch it and stuff like this. This is one of the reasons why I like doing stuff like this is because 
any other time that person would, would probably never have an opportunity or platform to kind of reach out and talk to people that they admire. So if I'm the bridge and I, I help maybe 10 to 15 people like that a year, I, I don't care if I get That's nothing okay. out of this besides that, then that right there makes it worth it. I mean, the fans, the people that support this sport, I mean, they're, they're making, they're, they're, you know, I appreciate for just, you know, for them, for their time and everything, like how, how much, like, you know, how much hype they bring up to, they the, make this, uh, they, to the sport. I don't think they understand how much they make this sport run. I really how do. I really important. think they underestimate exactly. how much they mean to you, how much they mean to the sport, how much they mean to everything. And how much, like, it means to me, like, just to take their time. Like, they they're tuning in to watch me, I'm like, no, go go watch something else. Like, it's, this will be really quick, I promise. Like, <laughs> people people are like, oh, they're calling me. Like, this is completely in, in contrast to, like, to where I was in Thailand. I was by myself and alone, and, you know, a lot of people aren't going to go fly out to Thailand to watch a quick fight and come back. It's a, you know, it's, it's very tedious. Of, it's, it's a lot of flying. So, in here now, like, they're like, oh, I'm going to come out to your fights, and I'm going to uh, fly out there. I'm like, no, just just stay home. You can watch it on TV. Uh, I'll, I'm going to be in there real quick. I'll be right think, back like, out. Like a, lot, a lot of people who are involved in the sport, that they this is what they live for, not not just you, but the experience of going to, 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 to watch in person, you know, somebody that they idolize for whatever reason. And maybe that, yeah. that, that you know, Two minute, uh, mi- minute confrontation where you actually meet this person, take a picture, hi, hug, you know, you know, thanks for the support. As much as it means to you, it probably means twice as much to them, because in this sport, yeah, sure. you guys are a hundred times more accessible than any other sport out there. And I think that right there is what makes this sport so special. What makes the athletes and the fans so special is because outside of it. You know, you look at NBA and hockey players or even football players, oh, sorry, kid, hey, you know, I can't sign this card. I, I have a deal with, with Pinnacle, so I can't, I can't sign your baseball card or your hockey card or whatever. You know how deflating that is to some people? But MMA fighters, you don't sit there and say, oh, oh well, that, that, that's, a, that, that's a so-and-so shirt or, 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 or a so-and-so glove. I, I, can't, I can't sign that. That's what makes oh man, I, I think I don't know how to respond. To except someone except for it. a rampage, rampage won't do anything. Oh, oh my god, goodness. don't get me started. Like, no. Oh, yeah, like I mean, for someone to he's oh done. my gosh. No, that, that's what, I mean, just when people come he's up to him, like, oh, absolutely. Some stuff he's done recently, but I mean, it's like I said, it's this is one of the few things why I think that makes the, the the people involved in it. And everything so so much different, so much special, and why I kind of believe like with moving forward, the next ten years is so important to this sport because it's either whether you're going to be just outside of those top four major sports brands out there, or you're going to get inside of it. And I've said it for a while, and I'll continue to say, it. women's mixed martial arts will push MMA into the top four black sports in, in the United States, in my opinion. Oh, that's that's very that's very refreshing to hear from someone because you know in, in in my heart I believe it and in my mind I believe it but it's very refreshing to, well, to it's, hear from but someone else. Kind of, the so proof is, is shown is like you you go and look at some of the you know at some of the, the the male fights. Yes, there's three times more male fights that you have out there, but when you see the female fighters come out, regardless if it's UFC, Invicta, Bellator. You know, you know, risen, you know, your king of the cage, whoever. When those girls step in the cage, they give you 110% what they have for that 5, 10, 15, 25 minutes. And nine times out of ten, you don't see a, one of those fights where, where you have people booing or this, that, and the third. Because regardless if you're on the feet or on the ground, you, you, you ladies always tend to keep the action moving. It's, you know, I guess it's like when uh, the lighter weight classes came out. It, you know, in the early 2000s, how everything was all crazy, and you would always see, see these, these these amazing fights. And I think it's kind of where you guys are at. You guys are at where this sport was 10 years ago. And absolutely, there's still some aspects where you're trying to catch up. Where I don't think you should have to be, as far as you know, pay wise and marketing wise. But I think eventually you'll get there, and you guys will get your dues. Oh yeah. 
No, I, I absolutely one hundred percent agree, and I and I feel like I feel like you know even um, I mean uh, the pay I mean the the pay is going to change per five, and if you're winning, it maybe I guess it, it hopefully it's going it increases, and I mean I think I think it, I mean if anything I think it was in the yeah, it's next five to ten year, five to ten years, then yeah I think if anything it will be up the same like. I, I mean, just the other well, was one card that had a, there was like two straw weight fights on it, or two or three straw weight fights on the card. But anyways, it, it was multiple uh, straw weights. Even on our card, there's going to be um, on the Oklahoma City card. There's going to be two straw weight fights. Uh, I know Carla and the Marina are fighting, um, or I saw that somewhere. And then uh, it's going to be Art, me and Felice. So yeah, it's definitely increasing, and there's going to be. I just feel like there's. People are going to be breeding, like, other, like, little children for this, and there's going to be, like, a little flood of monsters that are going to be coming out before you know it. And there's just, I mean, I see these little videos of just little girls that are, like, 12 and 13. Yeah, they look adorable, and they're, like, they're punching in the crap. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, if they keep up with this in, like, two to three years, they can be actively competing, and they're going to be out here yeah. before we know it. And next thing you know, there's going to be 16 year old. And here I am, I, you know, I would like to accomplish what I want to accomplish. I want to do the things that I want to do that I know I can do before these little monsters come out. <laughs> because hey, Clay, I see them. Uh, Clay, we just fight on this card? Oh, wow. Oh, boy. What, <laughs> Clay, we just fight on the card. And you know it's going to yeah. be an interesting night. But actually, sorry, uh, but I think uh, I think we, we opened Rusty up, and he actually did send me a few questions he wanted to ask you. Kind of related to the, to the season. Oh, here as well. we go. Uh, I wanted to know who, who was your favorite person to talk to uh, w- while on the show. Like you had that, uh, you know, uh, a sister in arms in the show. That that that, uh, you know, if it, if it got you away from everyone else, who, who was that person you would talk to? Um, I was most uh, Jessica Penn and I were we were friends before the show. We were friends uh, during the show. And we were friends after. Uh, but I really, really want to talk. There's, uh, there's. I really want to talk to some of the other girls, but I don't. I don't know if they liked me. Or they, they were just kind of their own in their own world. They didn't really want anything to do with me. So there, there are more girls I was really intrigued about. But yeah, I guess Jessica and Penny and I were, were the ones that were, you know, that were best. But that was that we we had the same relationship before, during, and after the house. But. Um, you know, of course, there are other girls that were very, very interested and had an amazing lives, and I was really interested about it. But um, again, I was, I was very, I was very um, cordial with everyone. I mean, in my opinion, it's ever on the show. If if someone had a problem with me, I, I had no idea or I was oblivious to it. So um, there's a lot more drama that was happening that I actually didn't realize that was going into it until our season was aired, and I. But that lets you know how 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 much of the drama part I was involved in because if I heard stuff going on, I was I need to go outside or something. I, so I hope that now now uh, now yeah, I'm I'm sure that 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 kind of took uh, took it where he wanted. Now the other one was is uh, I guess as everything got put together. You know, who, who did you want to win A- outside of yourself? You know, once the, the injury occurred, or I guess we'll, we'll go about it that way. When you, know, when you knew you were out of it, at that point in time, who were you pulling for to kind of win? Good question. Really, really there you good go, question. Rusty. Well, only because, I mean, only because I knew she was ranked number one and I had trained with her and I knew I could, you know, I knew I was – I, I knew I had the upper hand on her, and like I, I did in my mind, it's like, oh, I, I know I can beat this person. And that was Carla, and she had won the whole thing, and uh, that was the only reason why I I'd wanted I wanted her to win because she was ranked number. You know, it's the person on the top. It was it was always the person on the top in my eyes. So she came in at number. I got I think she was ranked number one, like on the sh- like to win or something, or ranked it. And anyway, so in my opinion, it's like, oh my gosh. You know, uh, if she goes through with it, okay, I have time. To, you know, it, I was playing this whole thing out. Like, okay, she's gonna win the show. Then I'll go ahead and get my knee fixed, and then I'll get my, well, I'll get my chance against her. Because, <laughs> yeah, but but then but then part of me, I was partial, of course, with with my team, with my teammate, a training partner, with Jessica. I was like, well, I want her to do very very well. But as far as who I wanted to win, so I could fight them, was Carla. 
because she came in at number one and right away I was like, okay, that's the best one. You know, I, I automatically like make comparisons and I was like, you know, this this is mine. I can do this. You know, the, especially that, when that's I call the matchup. That, that's the matchup I want to see. <laughs> Yeah. Not but only I'm not only do, do I want the number one ranked fighter, but I, I want to get her in the finale, and I like that matchup for me. Yeah, that that is it as far as like who's gonna, you know. So it was right away. I was like, you know, so when I when I was out, I was like, okay, well if Carla wins, you know, I'll go ahead and get this knee fixed, and I'll do what I can to get the belt from her. And uh, and, and speaking of the belt, I, I gotta ask you, it, it's coming up here r- real shortly. Uh, Andra's in. Uh, and Joanna are, are, are gonna gonna vie for the title. And new or in still? Good call. Um, I know you, Joanna. Joanna. The, 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 I'm actually uh, really, uh, really, really okay. torn on this fight. I am. I, I love Joanna, and, and and what 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 Jessica has done since dropping down to 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 that division is 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 amazing. Uh, I think she's a. She's a bigger, stronger, faster, more cardio version of Claudia Gadella. And I think this is going to be a really interesting matchup. I would not be surprised if uh, it's a war and it goes to the judges. Well, it's been, it's been like that for her for the past few fights. She's getting a lot of I – mean, she's, she's getting a lot of, lot of tabs on her hips. So it's not doing a whole lot of damage. Uh, I, would, I, I hope she stays the champ because I want to beat her. I want to be the one that beats her. Um. But it's a, you know it's I, it's going to be a great fight. It's going to be a brawl. It could look decision. But I I'm going to say I hope it's Jo uh, Joanna. Um, I hope she's still and the you know and still um, because I I would really like to be the one to um, to beat her. Yeah, a, a lot of people when you see a, a champion like that and and you have challengers that are chopping at the bit. They don't want to be the person that beats the next person. You want to be the person to beat the 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 one who's kind of the dominant factor in that in in that weight class. So, I mean, it, it, so it, I hope it, she says, uh, you know, yeah, it's a great it, fight. it should be it should be a it's fun fight. That's for sure. Up. I'm rooting for Joanna just because I I really want I I want to be the one because there's there's things that she does. I'm not going to stay on air because I don't know, how, you know, things, oh, things travel. Oh, don't give, don't give away what you see. Don't ever give it away. Is there they're something they're you think you see that no one else sees? There's you people know, that are not, they're not taking advantage that. of it. And I really, really, yeah. really want to get in there with her. I really, really do. But I'm staying cool, keeping my cool, staying focused. I I heard there was, like, a, something in a, uh, stirring up about flyweight opening up. Of course, I want, I'm want i excited about flyweight, but I'm more excited about my fight coming up. Then I'll be excited about the flyweight division. But uh, I want you want to do it. I want to be the one to beat her. So, you know, it, lo- it looks like she's doing all the right things. And But the Andrade, Andrade girl, I think, uh, yeah, she's like, it's, with her style, with the way she, uh, with her burst and her, you know, energy, you know, knockout could happen anywhere with her, you know, like. She might be too slow. Yeah, she her, has like, that, uh, I would say that, that Dane Henderson quality about her. Like, it doesn't matter if it's in the first round, good compared, the first yeah, minute, good, yeah. the, the 22nd minute. She has the, the power to, to, to turn somebody's, uh, to turn somebody's brain off, off with, without, with, without any notice. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. yeah, like it, 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 things, uh, anything can happen. So I'm. Uh, well, that's why we love I watching mean, MMA her, because anything can happen. You know, that's that, I think that's why. All it takes, yeah, all this the freaking is, training you do, all it takes is something you just you didn't see. That's all it, you know. You just you you know. I try to stay as observant as I can. My my head is clear. I don't make a lot of plans, but you know, it's a fight. You know, I, you know, I gotta. Got to be observant and pay attention to what's going on during the situation. I don't have much emotions. I don't want to deal with emotions. So, like, these are things that are going on. I'm trying to stay observant as possible because there's all it takes is one second. That's you an just, interesting aspect of it, too. You, you, when you say so, that you don't – when you go in there, you don't have any set plan. So, do do you not – like, you? I know you have an, a, 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 a way that you, you want to attack you know, a fighter, but going into a fight, do you kind oh, yeah. of see what they give you? And then if it goes to that next round, then that's when you and your, your coaches discuss something or is it you just kind of um, give whatever the fight take gives you? I like giving like what the, the fight takes me, but now I'm dealing with five minute rounds a lot more. It, there's a lot more, there's a lot more 
evasive, like people being more evasive, so I have to be a little bit more strategic. And this, you know, Muay Thai is very, very close quarters, and you only have like a few, a, a few minutes to to get things done. Five minutes, you have to be a little bit more strategic. You can go in and all in hard and aggressive and stuff like that too. There's 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 that plan, and there's those plans like you know to manipulate manipulate situations in certain styles, and and you know there's. You know, there's loopholes. You know that you know for every person that has a coach, has one coach, or that has changes up coaches. So there's just so many different, there's so many different factors. So I just try to like not have a whole lot of expectations. My coaches will will study will study footage, and but I really don't. I have I keep my expectations to a minimal, just so I don't have to deal with any. Just so that I don't have to deal with anything. Well, no, and I don't want to ever be in a fight. Thing. Kind of attached to think, oh, an emotional I never want to think, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the things I think. I think Mike Tyson talked about this is like, don't have any expectations when it comes to a fight because the emotional and physical letdown afterwards is so much more damaging to your your, your mental aspect as a fighter. That, that it, it, exactly, it you just don't want to be you. correcting. You, you don't, I mean, if you're dealing with emotions like, oh, my God, what's going on, then you've already left the moment. You're not dealing with what's going on at the time. So I want to, like, I, I, I'm i training so much, so I'm, 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 I'm comfortable, and I've seen myself in every position. I'm never like, oh, where am I right now? What is this position? I've trained in, you know, like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very, com- I'm almost too comfortable in there. My coach, my last slide, he was like, you're just too comfortable in there. You're not even getting going into the third round. Like, what? It's like, well, like, I'm trying to, like, turn things around and stuff. You know, like, when I'm on my back, I can hear the whole crowd getting excited. They think I'm losing and shit. Like, it's, you know, like, it's, you know, you can really take, you know, you can, certain little moves just to really get people going and just, like, the the crowd, the audience, like, oh, my God, like, they like this. They think I'm losing right now. But in my mind, everything's okay. I'm not in a threat. I'm all right. Like, but then, and like, you watch it on TV. My friend's like, "What were you, What was going on here? What happened?" I was like, "That's okay. Like, I'm just waiting for A, B, or C, you know, like to happen." And they're like, "Oh my God, this just looks bad, though." I'm like, "It's all right. I'm not. I know. I've been in that position before. I'm. I, I, I'm okay. I promise." I want to be comfortable in every position. I never want to be there thinking. Oh shit! Because and obviously there's something that you know clearly in my mind there's something that happened in training. Like if I'm not comfortable, if I'm if I haven't seen myself, or if I don't know how to handle whether from my back or my feet, or or you know on uh, whether I'm you know a position of advantage or disadvantage. I never want to feel like you know, I, I haven't, and maybe that's another issue. Like now I've got to you know, feel like I'm threatened before I have, like, that trigger, before I have that trigger just to go all out. Because I really haven't really, in in my past uh, uh, USA, um, uh, UFC fights, I haven't, you know, really gone all out yet. I'm just kind of, like, waiting for a moment, wait for a moment, because there's just a plethora of options and, like, going through my head, like, oh, my God, I have all of this. And then I'm just trying to, you know, make a decision on how, you know, how I want to finish it. And the next, you know, like okay, it's an, you know, it's the next round, it's the next round. The next, you know, I, I haven't, dis- I couldn't decide on what I wanted to do. So yeah, I gotta be a little bit more decisive and be like, maybe, may- maybe come in with a little bit more of a plan. But I'm not gonna, I'm, I mean, I'm not gonna change do, my mind. Do you kind of feel my... that that you need to, you need to kind of uh, uh, be overly impressive in this next fight to kind of move up the rankings to be where you, where you envision yourself being? No. No, I know because you know I I go in there and I fight like you know I'm I'm competing and the fight alone is is exciting and I I'm not going to try to I'm not going to try to do things you know like no I'm sorry I'm not I don't saying, like to, go don't outside of your uh, to go out of your way to try to, to try to you know be anything than you would normally be I'm just saying uh, as you know an outlook you know do you feel you know to kind of you know, get your way up those rankings that that you you, you have to be you know you know you know impressive on, on, on the twenty fifth of June. No, I mean, I, I, I to be honest, I really wasn't. I, in my opinion, like my last two fights, I, it, it wasn't. I I know what I can do, and I know the. I, I know, I haven't. Um, I, as actually, my last two fights, I've actually really been disappointed because I, I really. 
I, again, by the third round, I felt like I was just getting warmed up, and that's not good. So uh, um, they haven't been that exciting, in my opinion, and I'm already going against a very high rank. You know, this is a high-profile fight, in my opinion, and um, I'm like, wow, I'm already getting this opportunity, and they have they – have, people really have not seen anything like of what I really want to do just because of my, just because of me being indecisive, but, um, we're working on it. <laughs> There's a lot more things with MMA than there is with, with, with Muay Thai. So it's just yeah, dealing yeah. with, um, limiting my options. If, if, if that makes more sense, limiting the options that I, that I will, that I want to take advantage of. So, um, no, because, you know, I've already, from the fights that I've gone in, they've gone to decision. I'm already getting a high-profile fight. No, because I know there's still so much to, to showcase. And um, I think it's going to, I think it's going to blow up whenever I can finally find that trigger. Find find a moment for that, tri- you know, find a trigger for that moment. I just absolutely let go and just do real damage. But I just took, uh, a really it's took, It takes a while before a lot of fighters find that that balance to kind of, uh, you know, you know, like you said, you felt like it was, you know, you were finally getting into the swing of things when you're, when you're, you know, already two rounds in and, you know, and that's not a good thing. It, a lot of times you hear a lot of fighters say it, it you know, you know, maybe you know, they don't, they don't want to overdo it warming up. And then, you know, you, you kind of feel like you, you've dumped everything in the back room instead of in the cage. And then, then, you know, you're, you're one of these ones where it takes you a little bit longer to get started up than, the, 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 well, I yeah, it's going to. I'm going to, yeah. It's, and I, for anything, I think, I mean, I, I'm not going to do, I mean, I'm not going to say what I am or I'm not going to do, uh, but uh, with, I mean, with Felice's personality, the kind of person she is, I wouldn't I wouldn't go above the, the idea that she would probably do something crazy or outrageous to uh, throw, uh, throw stir the, the emotions. Exactly. Stir, stir the emotions emotion as well. Uh, so I'm not yep. I'm not uh, underestimating any of any of the things that she 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 should she would or she could do. Um, I'm I'm very open to her being completely wild and just going after it out there. Her jumping into something crazy. Her just you know trying to you know there's she doesn't know what I'm screwing up and I don't know what she's screwing up and it's a thrill you know it's exciting. Uh, it's one of the things I think we're all going to be looking forward to. I'm, I'm re- really looking forward to, to this matchup with, with, with you and Felice, Justine. Um, as we get ready to uh, to close down down the interview tonight, um, what we typically do is kind of throw the proverbial microphone over to you. Anyone you would like to thank, train the partners, teammates, shoot out your social media sites, uh, any sponsors that you might have, any charities you're working with, a- anything you want to say at all, Justine, that the Absolutely. time is short. Well, thank you. Well, of course, I want to thank everyone, my training partners, my coach, uh, Jeff Jimmo, and my training partners at Jimmo. That's in uh, Gastonia, North Carolina. Um, I love you guys. Thank you. My sponsor is North Carolina, Houston Associates. Um, just, just, the, just the companies that have supported me, um, I appreciate the love, the, um, of course, all of the um, – the attention, the the help, and uh, um, I'm very I'm very grateful for it all. Um, let's see, um, I'm excited that I get to be on the East Coast and uh, stay with a lot of a lot of my the friends, a lot of my friends and family. But um, most of all, I want to thank all the people that that tune in to to this radio station, to the fights, to, to support me, to support women, whatever whatever it may be. I just want to thank all of you guys. And you know we're appreciative of everyone from from you know our guests to to our listeners to you know even guys that we were talking about guys guys like Rusty he does so much stuff behind the scenes people don't even realize he's uh he's kind of like a like a monk of MMA I guess I would say <laughs> you know he he always wants everyone to get along and be happy and all that good stuff so you know I'm glad that uh, you know at the very least we got his questions answered and hopefully uh, mm-hmm. I already sent you I already inboxed you his uh, his Twitter handle so. When you get a chance, uh, you know. Okay, thank you. I'll, 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 I'll if, if you don't, I'll, I'll get his uh, get his information so we can uh, we can get a Justin Tish uh, fame package sent out to the to the gentleman there. Um, oh sure. Really looking forward to the fight. Like I said, you know, it's uh, this division is is kind of uh, came out of nowhere. A lot of people weren't really big on it when it first came, when, it, when it first got to the UFC and. It's taken off so much now where I kind of feel straw weight is kind of taking over bantamweight. 
for for whatever reason that is, you're a part of it. I think you're you're, the you're talent, one of the prospects yeah, that, that that a lot of people have. dude. The talent is insane, and even when flyweight comes in, it's even going to get even crazier because some of the girls who were in the wrong weight classes will finally be able to be put in the right weight classes. The matchups are going to be insane. Like uh, there, there's just so much stuff that's happening. Oh, I know. MMA, not just, I focus, and not I just in the UFC either, I'm but it's just one of the things. That it's just, yeah, and that was one of the okay. things. Ever, like, uh, <laughs> like, like people were asking, like, "Oh, is Justine going to be interested in flyweight?" Well, let, let's let her worry about June 25th first, and then the answer that, is, yeah, that's exactly. She would entertain. Exactly. I'm, gonna... I'm sure she doesn't want to go through the Ultimate Fighter again. I'm absolutely positive about that. <laughs> is that that's a fair assessment? <laughs> That's very true. Um, but you're, you're right, though. Like, I, yeah, I'm. I, I don't mean to ignore questions or comments about, but I'm really just giving no comment about flyweight because I'm, I'm, I'm excited about this fight, and then I'll be excited about the other. That's how my, that's how my focus is. That's how, that's that's just how it is. That's how it goes. So, I'll so we'll just say no. She out. hasn't ruled it out, but she, but she hasn't said 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 no either. So we we'll just we'll leave it exactly. in the air like that. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. Sounds good. Oh man, Justine! It was an absolute pleasure having you on tonight. It was, was so much fun talking to you, getting getting to learn a little bit more about you. Really, again, really looking forward to this fight. Uh, you know, I, I'm really torn because cool. I have nothing but respect for Felice, but at the same time, you're you're young, you're you're hungry, you're, you're a contender that 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 uh that is uh climbing up the rankings, and uh, she she better she better take uh take this fight very seriously because I'm sure you are. Oh, I think she is, and I hope she is, and I hope she has a happy. And I hope Felice Herrick has a happy, healthy camp, uh, and I'm excited to, uh, to to go against her to fight her. It, it, it always feels weird saying fight. I say bout or to compete, but um, I'm ex- I, You know, of course, I'm equally excited, if not more excited, uh, for it all to go down soon. Just like, uh, just a few weeks now. Yes, yes, yes. Brad, anything you want to add before we let uh, we let Miss Keys go? Hey, Justine, I just want to say thanks for coming on the show. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to the fight uh, coming up on June 25th. It's going to be one hell of a fight, UFC Fight Night 112. Be there, people. Yeah, be there, people. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Justine, again, it was a pleasure having you on. Likewise. And uh, hopefully we get to have you back on again here in the future and uh, ha- uh, have some more uh, interesting talks and Tom Foolery, whatever the uh, – Whatever our, our time allows us. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, it was nice talking to you guys. I gotta get ready for bed. I have an early training session tomorrow. So again, thank you for so all right, much for well, having me. All right. Get so. some sleep. Have a good one. And uh, and uh, you know, as I say to all, all our guests, uh, you know, have a uh, you know best of skill, and hopefully both you and your opponent get out of their injury free. <laughs> That's great. I love it. All right. You have a good one, Justine. Bye. You too.